Is Dave Bautista a unicorn loving future bot? Can you vape in the house of reps and then blame your gaming habits on your kid? And is the force strong with the new Rogue One trailer? Let's find out. This is your Looter News. Hey Looters, Pete here on this gorgeous April 8th to sum up the week's nerdy news and we know the deep recesses of the internet is calling, so let's jump right in. So you learn something new every day, turns out one of the main features of pro wrestling is TLC, Tender Loving Care. What's that? It's not, it's table, ladders, and chairs? Yeah, that makes more sense. Then you can imagine our confusion when Dave, I went to fisticuffs with both James Bond and Ronan in the last few years, Batista tweeted this picture of him making art out of his gum wrapper. Now, those of us who don't dream of electric sheep may not have picked up on the subtle reference, so the Guardians of the Galaxy star took to Twitter again just a few days ago to confirm his involvement in Blade Runner 2. The dystopian sequel to the game-changing sci-fi film Blade Runner already has a tremendous cast with Ryan Gosling and Robin Wright, all of whom will be led by director Denis Villeneuve, whose Oscar-nominated film Sicario came out just last year, and we also know that Harrison Ford is going to be reprising his role, but more details about character or story elements haven't been made public yet. Chances are, even if we spoiled anything from the film, you would need to see it again and again and again and then again just to see what you missed the first time. I'm hoping for some Batista in the rain with a John Woo number of doves. <coughs> And speaking of having too many good things at once, I'm gonna need Steam to back off with all of the great sales, okay? My wallet can only take so much, you guys. Now, admittedly, we all can go a little overboard with the indie games sometimes, but never have I ever not known about 68 charges made to my Steam account. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for San Diego Congressman Duncan Hunter, who has just been accused of purchasing some sweet new video games with campaign funds. A total of $1,302 was notated as a personal expense in 2015, and the commissioner of the fraud investigation gave him until May 9th to respond to the charges. But all the congressman is saying at this point is that his son made a mistake with his car. Hmm. Right, right, right. Hey, maybe all of this can be chalked up to research of some kind, right? Though the fraud charges do paint the congressman in a weird light, he's also been a defender of the good in games. He wrote recently, quote, The narrative that children and young adults today stare at television and computer screens developing lethal skills through first-person gaming experiences disingenuously portrays video games as having a corrosive influence. The problem with this rationale is that it conveys an image that America's youth are incapable of discerning right from wrong, which is simply not true. So this could be the first time that Congress has an advocate for gaming, but do we want the guy who just made news by vaping in the House of Representatives to be our guy? Maybe? But Friday cures all blues because it is movie day. Make sure to hit us up on Twitter and tell us what you saw this weekend. We'll talk all about it. And since we love to keep you updated on the what's what in the future of movie news, let us check in with our DVD Blu-ray bundle of a correspondent, Omar. Uh, The Force Awakens. It came out on Blu-ray this week. That's the news. What are you even doing watching this? This is like an entire week's worth of behind the scenes footage and special features. We find out that Kylo Ren has a bunch of ashes from people he's killed. And we have that amazing five minute scene where Ray argues about portion sizes. You measure from the outside to the middle, not the other way around. Quit hot dogging her. What am I even doing here? I gotta go watch Force Awakens, goodbye. Oh, and <laughs> Rogue One trailer, <laughs> choice. That's it, Pete, that's all I got. Um, thanks, Omar. Uh, speaking of spaceships in the sky causing chaos, we had the opportunity to sit down with Keith Aram, director of the upcoming film, The Phoenix Incident. Check it out. Uh, so my name's Keith Aram. I'm the uh, president and CEO of PCB Productions here in Los Angeles, and we run uh, five recording stages. And predominantly, I've been working in the video game industry for the past 20 years, uh, working on games like Tony Hawk, Call of Duty, Ghost Recon, everything from Prince of Persia to Spider-Man and Transformers. And uh, I've been working as a talent director, so working with all the, the talent, the voice uh, overs, the ADR, motion capture, facial capture, and we created these sound stages here so we could focus on doing high-end game development. And over the past five or six years, I've moved a lot of my focus into working on uh, motion pictures and television, uh, as well as graphic novels and original games. So the first project that's going to be coming out this year is The Phoenix Incident, and it's going to be hitting theaters on April 8th. 
So I got into video games almost 20 years ago, uh, mainly working in music. I started on Capitol Records. I was with the band Contagion and Biohazard PCB, and I was touring. And the whole time we were on tour, we we're playing video games at the back of our tour buses. Uh, and I got into uh, scoring games, so early games like Earthworm Jim and Mech Warrior, uh, Robotech, all those games. I was doing these early scores on Sega Genesis and Nintendo. Uh, the first session I ever did, uh, we were doing a big project called Toonstruck, and we had Tim Curry coming in as our first celebrity actor. And the producer walked in, and the writer walked in, and I said, who's directing the, the actor? And they looked around, they're like, well, you're the audio guy. <laughs> and so that's how I got started directing. Well, the Phoenix Lights were the largest mass UFO sighting in North America, if not the world. And it took place in Phoenix, Arizona back in March of 1997. And I grew up in Arizona as a kid, and I came out here to go to recording school. And I had been back in Arizona when the sighting happened. Uh, and I didn't see it myself, but my family and friends were calling me and telling me about this mass group of lights that was coming over the state and over the city. And this fleet of lights, like eight or nine lights in formation, either one mile long craft or eight or nine individual craft uh, went down across the entire state, uh, went over the city of Phoenix, they scrambled jets from the local Air Force base, and 30,000 people witnessed this, including the uh, the governor of the state who came out on CNN and said that he witnessed a ship going overhead. So there were investigations and a big military cover-up. The military said these were just flares, but then you have all these really accredited people talking about seeing these craft going overhead, and they closed the airport for a period of time. And there were all these other conspiracies going on around that. So I, I thought as a first time director moving into motion pictures, I wanted to tackle a subject that not only took place in my home state uh, that I knew very well, but a subject that I was really passionate about and just trying to get to the bottom of what may have happened that night. So when I was casting the film, I wanted to bring people in that I were very, was very comfortable with and people I had worked with for a long time. So I was bringing in uh, Troy Baker and Travis Willingham and Liam O'Brien and Yuri Lowenthal. And these guys, uh, when you see them in the film, this is who they are. This is the guys that I know and, and love and, and have worked with these guys for a number of years. And so I kind of based a lot of their characters and the characterizations based on who they are. One of the more unusual things that we wanted to do with the film was not only take the talent and resources from the game industry to develop the film, but also how we were going to market and distribute the movie as well. So that started into this really unique entrepreneurial sort of relationship with all these other companies. And now we're working with uh, Loot Crate and doing some really interesting innovations there and offering digital content and other opportunities for that audience as well. And, uh, and now that we're finally able to share this with the public has been a great opportunity because I can move on to my next stories, put this one a little bit to rest. I don't think you ever really put a story to rest, uh, but we're talking about doing prequels and sequels to this movie and we're gonna have other supplemental stuff that'll continue to come out so we're explore, uh, we're gonna be exploring other incidents not just the Phoenix incident but other uh, unidentified mysteries that uh, have been recorded over the years the Phoenix incident releases in select theaters across the country and is on video on demand worldwide today as per usual my friends the Star Wars trailers are causing tectonic shifts on the internet so naturally we asked you all a question about it this week we inquired about what you guys would name your x-wing and this is what you had to say there is something about Star Wars that makes you guys creative as the Dickens but we had to choose so the winner of the finest named x-wing for now is from at pig sticks who says paint it in the Spanish flag and call it rogue one. Yes. All the yeses. Make sure to keep an eye out on the Loot Crate Twitter account for more awesome questions and a chance to have your answer featured on next week's episode. And that's it for this week's episode of Looter News. Tell us, my friends, who do you think is going to be a replicant in Blade Runner 2? What is the most that you have ever spent on one order on Steam? And what would you do with the freshly lightsabered ash of your dead foes? Let us know in the comments down below. Give the subscribe button a click and we'll see you next week on an all new episode of Looter News. Budding!